Welcome back as we continue our amazing journey down the holidays with our Heroes series here on Eco Ask Why. And you know by now, between here and Christmas, these episodes are coming week in and week out, and they are full of inspiration. And Christmas week is qu- is quickly approaching, and that's when the big surprise will be revealed, so you do not want to miss it. Now, this episode, I sat down with my buddy, Hussein Al-Khalaf, and you may remember him from episode 116, where he gave us that inside look to the pulp and paper world. Now, here, Hussein talks about a lot of his passions, what he enjoys doing. He's a big runner. He actually is a coach in doing that. And even since we recorded this, Hussein is now working for a company called Jetson Engineering. So I know you're going to love Hussein, his story, and his inspiration. You know, speaking about those stories, we're still getting the industry war stories coming in. And what better time of year than this time of year to start thinking about? You're going to be meeting with family and friends. You're going to be getting together, gathering, and telling all sorts of wonderful stories. So if you if you do, just capture it, record it, send it to us. We'd love to share your industry war story with others. You can submit those to us on Instagram or Facebook, and you can check out the links in the show notes to figure out exactly how to do that. If you have any questions, just reach out to us. Now, it's time to get some really great insight from my buddy, Hussein, and his amazing journey. Cue the music. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation, and we're very excited to have with us Mr. Hussein Al Khalaf, who is the Capital Project Manager at International Paper. So, welcome, Hussein. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. How you doing today, man? Very good. Very good. We're we're lucky to be alive. You got that right now. Now you're based out of Savannah, right? That is correct. So it looks like it's a beautiful day. Just judging by the, the, the sunshine behind you, it looks like it's a beautiful day in Georgia. Yeah, we are about 74 right now. And I'm supposed to climb up to 78. All right. All right. Well, that's that's wonderful. Well, we yeah. love to get these conversations started, Hussein, just by sharing your, your journey with our listeners. So what, what would you like to tell us here? Well, I've got a long journey. I'm the long version of the short version. I like the long version, man. Long version always. All right. You want to grab a cup of something uh, while you uh, sit back and enjoy it then. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, hence the name. Uh, I'm, I'm not a U.S. native. Uh, I was born in, in the 80s uh, back in Baghdad, Iraq. And uh, due to the turmoil, my parents made a decision to flee the country. Like any Iraqi immigrant family seeking refuge, we were not welcome in any country, unfortunately, around the world. Due to sanctions, due to due, due you know, all that. And so we moved from Iraq, Baghdad, Baghdad Iraq, to Amman, Jordan uh, uh, for a few months, and then to Beirut, to Lebanon, uh, stayed in Beirut for about six years, uh, from the age of eight to the age of 14. And Beirut was was uh, not st- was not a stale country by, by all means, uh, although we did not live comfortably at all. It brought the family uh, uh, together, uh, but, uh, and, and it was one of the best places we've lived in as a family, despite, you know, external factors, there is a beautiful country. If you have a chance to go, go. People love life. People enjoy life. People love their country. Um, uh, and then late 2000s, uh, my father, who's a doctor, got an opportunity in, in, uh, to work in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates, <clears throat> where we moved and things got a lot better for the family. Uh, and then in, in fast forward uh, uh, four years, um, um, Canada to, to pursue my uh, my uh, uh, undergrad education. Uh, that's why I enrolled in a, in a, a university uh, uh, in Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, on my own, I ventured out. A 19-year-old wanted to get myself out. Uh, I thought I'm in, I was invincible. I thought I can do it all by myself. And uh, no. Uh, so I experienced a huge culture shock, uh, weather shock. Uh, felt like the earth revolved in a different direction. Uh, where I was, it was somewhat tough to manage life, uh, house responsibilities, uh, working part-time, juggling working part-time and doing odd jobs, uh, work, I mean, and, and school, sorry. Um, I wouldn't say I graduated with flying colors, uh, but it was a, d- a difficult journey at first. And I slowly was able to find my bearings and eventually finish my undergrad in, in 2009 uh, in, in engineering. <clears throat> 
I started work with with uh, uh, shortly after graduation. I started work with uh, with Georgia Pacific as a junior uh, process control engineer. Uh, uh, they have operations in they they had operations in Canada, uh, in uh, southern Ontario, uh, where I started uh, uh, as a uh, as a junior process control engineer in a gypsum plant. Uh, <clears throat> so after a Georgia Pacific or GP, the gypsum industry, I. Uh, shortly moved into the uh, uh, consulting world. Um, uh, I worked with a pilot plant manufacturer. Uh, that was a really interesting job where we built miniature sized plants. It wasn't miniature like that, but it was miniature uh, right. for all cracking and oil, uh, the oil uh, uh, industry. So they'd build a smaller plant uh, to prove a larger uh, uh, oil rig, let's say. So um, it was solely built for lab purposes. It was really, really interesting. A really interesting job. Um, shortly after, uh, I then joined an opportunity opened up in northern Canada, uh, where um, you'd experience minus 59 winters for almost six months of the year. Uh, I was I jumped all over it. Anyways, it was uh, in the uh, OSB business, uh, the Oriented Strand Board. Um, if you're familiar with it, it's a substitute to plywood. It was a manufacturing plant in a town called Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan, in, in northern Canada. Uh, where there, I led a, a, a process control department uh, and the day-to-day -day, uh, maintenance activities. Um, you know, the, the plant was located in a very small town, like I said, a population of 1,300 people. It was about four and a half hours away from anything, from an airport, from a Costco, from a Walmart. We had two gas stations, uh, about, you know, about uh, a handful of restaurants. And the whole town goes to sleep at five. Um, so, uh, and everybody knew everybody. You couldn't do anything that people would know of. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is, it, it, although it was a very pleasant experience, uh, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I like to immerse myself within the community. So I helped a lot uh, around the community. I shouldn't say I helped. Uh, I, I, I immersed myself in the community uh, um, and, and gained many different experiences, learned a lot about myself, about people, uh, learned to appreciate, uh, uh, and look at things from many different angles. I uh, kept myself busy with community events. Like I said, uh, joined the Rotary Club. Uh, I volunteered as a coach, which, uh, their high school, the, the, uh, Hudson Bay, uh, high school, uh, um, uh, uh track team. Uh, and then in 2014, uh, I got married and uh, <clears throat> moved my wife into Hudson Bay. She loved not. So we moved. <laughs> uh, yeah, in, 20, in 2016 is when we moved to um, uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, the company had, uh, has a, a, an engineering, uh, a corporate engineering office located in Washington, uh, uh, Vancouver, Washington. And it was one of the you know, one of the best jobs I've done or introduced me to project management, uh, where I served uh, as, a, as a deputy project manager and a commissioning team lead for projects across the US and Canada. That was a very fun, enjoyable time in my life, uh, 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 traveling, uh, seeing different mills, understanding how, how you know, each mill, uh, what, what eat the business does and, and um, you know, understand how projects look uh, 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 from a from a development standpoint, execution standpoint, and and commissioning standpoint, so it gave me a lot of appreciation of of all these different levels within the company, within the project, within the execution levels. And in November 2015, Warehouser announced the sale of their cellulose fiber mills and corporate engineering office. And December 2016 is when I became an IP employee and moved uh, to Savannah to take on a uh, capital uh, project manager role in uh, June of 2017 and fast forward a few years in 2021 and uh, here I am standing in front of you. Man, that is great, man. So you have been all over the place, Hussein. That is an amazing yeah. story. Yeah, it contributes to a lot of, uh, a lot of my learnings. Definitely. No doubt, man. That's now the, the culture shock alone of, of, you know, just going from where you were to Canada, I'm sure that was a big one, but I'm thinking the temperature shock itself, it was probably a big one too, right? Very much. Yeah. It uh, came from an environment that, uh, you know, the coldest it would get talking uh, uh, degree C, uh, it'd be minus one or minus two. So it'll be 32, 30, you know, 31 degrees F 
at <clears throat> right the lowest but i went to canada where it's it's far beyond that no kidding man and then you went even further north and yeah. i am familiar with osb i used to to serve at several osb plants so i know they can be a lot of fun i love the uh the presses inside yeah. the osb mills the way those presses work to uh to actually make the board but uh so like it got even colder the further up you went oh yeah oh yeah so your, your wife it. was saying uh-uh we're getting out of this cold weather we got to get to some warmness exactly exactly <laughs> wonderful answer it's been a great great journey thank you for sharing with me so if you're looking you've been in pulp and paper for a while what do you see as some of the greatest challenges that industry has in the future so from my perspective, uh, uh, being a younger engineer, um, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, attracting new talents and the industry have to work uh, on that, uh, specifically on, on new graduates attracting Generation Y uh, 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 um, individuals where some of them want to work from, you know, from home or um, do not necessarily want to get dirty or do not have a... Uh, I do understand the, 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 the industry itself, uh, the manufacturing industry itself. Um, so they want to spend less time at work sometimes and more time focusing on things external to work. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's a shift. The market and the industry has to adjust to this change and integrate a work-life balance uh, workplace to essentially attract people of, yeah. of, of that nature. In, in lieu of that, I think that's great feedback. How should we attract them? You know, how can we get that next gen, that Gen Y you were talking about, to really open their eyes and consider this industry? I mean, are are there any practical ideas you may have, or just thoughts around attracting people? So far, as, you know, getting them to to want to really invest time in learning about the industry. Yeah, a, a, a primarily education. Uh, educate them on the industry. Educate them on the manufacturing industry and uh you know what sort of rewards they would get being part of that industry right. uh the challenges uh certainly the challenges are rewarding to me uh as i spent about 11 years in, in the manufacturing now and have seen and learned um a lot and and and, and brought on uh, and expanded my 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 uh uh, uh skill set if you will uh, manufacturing in general is is a good place to start the career because because you know, uh, uh, it, it, you could wear many hats uh, and you're yep. given the opportunity to do, uh, provide or, uh, or, or do things uh, that are definitely challenging and rewarding, like I stated. Um, and then working with a company as, as IP provides avenues to excel and take your career in, in the direction that you aspire or, or, or want to achieve. And anybody can you know, rise through the ranks provided that they have the drive and vision. Right, right, no doubt. Now, let's 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 pretend that we're in a uh, a high school right now, and we're sitting in front of some uh, a class of seniors, and you want to give them some advice about the future, and maybe think they, they're maybe they're thinking about manufacturing or pulp and paper or just industry in general. What advice would you offer up, man? Um, spend more time thinking about how you can change the opportunities at hand. Uh, understand what's challenging, uh, study the challenge before making strides or attempt to change anything. Um, um, that's probably the number one thing that come to mind. So seek to understand. Seek to understand. Yes. There you go. That's so important. I think we're, we're mighty quick these days to just feel like we need to jump in with an answer. But uh, if we're not, we don't have all the, the information that we need, we may be making a mistake, couldn't we? That is correct. Yeah. Collect all the facts, collect all the, all the information before you jump to conclusions. No doubt, my friend. Now, how about when you look back across your career, I'm sure there have been people in your life that have helped you from a mentor standpoint, from a, from a mentor standpoint uh, trying to, to give you good advice and, and help you along your way. Does anybody stand out? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been fortunate to, to work with amazing people thus far, and uh, I've learned a lot from, from projects that I've executed um, and, and uh, thus far uh, as a PM and as a process control engineer. And uh, the one uh, person that, that helped me or kickstart my, uh, my career, let's say, and, and, and had believed in me and hired me on as a co-op student 
Uh, he doesn't know, by the way, that I'm calling him out here. Uh, um, his name was, uh, can I state a name? Sure. Yeah, his name was uh, Sean Murray. He, he was a great and awesome individual. Uh, by that, uh, I mean, um, he, uh, like he, he hired me on. He saw the potential in me uh, as, a, as a junior process control engineer uh, um, uh, wanting to get a, a co-op job. And uh, he handed me a, a, a great deal of responsibility, or I'd like to think of that at the time, uh, to, to basically design the human machine interface or the graphics or the HMI uh, and then integrate them with the controller. And obviously the first thing, you know, I, I wouldn't know what to do the first day on the job. He handed me information and be like, go to work. But uh, I, I slowly started realizing that he focused on my personality and my personal development, not necessarily my technical uh, abilities. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I, I know I'd, I'd come back to work the next day and, 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 and he'd approach uh, 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 you know, my, the problems that I had in a different way. So he always had a vested interest in, in developing me rather than my technical background. He didn't make me feel like, you know, like I was a co-op co -op student. Uh, you know, he didn't criti criticize my my action. He, he criticized my actions, but not didn't judge me as as, as my character. Um, you know, I, I learned a great deal from from him. He was always composed and calm, regardless of, of of the number of hours he put in each day. He was humble and and practiced humility uh, day in day out. Uh, so he he was the he was the uh, the first person that uh, I, you know, I, I, I looked up to as a mentor in, in, in the early part of my career. It sounds like he was pretty intentional as well about, you know, investing his time yes. in you to try to help you. I mean, just, just to be that mentor, man, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to feel that way and have people around you that support you. Absolutely. Now, have you had a chance to, to, mentor others along the way now this this next generation that's coming up have, have, are you f finding opportunities to help them but particularly in your industry yes yes certainly you know we uh we bring in uh we try to bring in new talents younger talents so we try to educate them about different of uh, uh, the differing part of the paper manufacturing industry it's not only making paper but there's supporting services that support the paper industry that supports the machine uh, 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 you know, put like putting new projects. That's what we primarily do. Uh, so we'd educate them on, on mentor them on how to develop projects, take them into, you know, from an idea uh, 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 into into something that can be designed, and then later executed and built and, and handed over to to the operations team. Man, that's pretty cool, man. Well, hats off to you for recognizing that's important for you to invest in other people. And you just seem like just a happy guy. Maybe it's just your personality, man. It's just, I, I, I love your energy. Yeah. You know? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so take that, that happiness. <laughs> I appreciate it. So the happiness that, you, that, that I'm feeling right now, that's what you've been talking about. When do you have that happiness at work? You know, when you're feeling fulfillment and you're really enjoying what you're doing, what, what are you doing in those moments, Hussein? What's, what makes you the happiest? Well, well, let me focus on the first part of your question. Um, you know, it's when you get fulfillment uh, from, uh, you know, when you, when you achieve a goal, when you, when you, you know, complete a race, you get that, right, hormones going through your body, yep. right? Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I always like to feel that way. And I've gotten that uh, uh, comment from several others. Um, First, I, I, I most get fulfilled at work uh, when I feel that I have uh, uh, and I'm working with a winning team. Uh, this, primar this primarily hinges on, on, on how you uh, conduct yourself as a project manager or, or a leader, or, or, uh, you know, applying good leadership practices, entrusting and encouraging teammates. Uh, you know, this, is, this is my responsibility to ensure that I facilitate and pave a way to allow people to collaborate and understand. And primarily, that's what we're after, right? Is is make a, an environment that's that's conducive to to performing, right? Make it easy for everyone to come to work, or wanting to come to work, and 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 help them navigate and ensure that we have you know clear vision, and this is what is, is expected. Set the vision. This is what expected, and then guide them through the finish line. Right. right? And um, secondly, this the sense of fulfillment does not stop at that, but. Uh, uh, when the team collectively arrives at the finish line, it, it's a good feeling. You know, it's 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 not one person got you to the finish line, but it's a team effort. 
yeah. um, that uh, that gets get, get, gets the winning winning trophy basically. That's right. I, it's, I'm just feeling that for you, that team collaboration is so important. Yeah, I realize that you can't accomplish, you know, a task by your own. You know, if you're at home, you have your family supporting you, right? So that's that's your team. If you're at work, you have a team working with you to achieving your goals and vision. And that's another team. Uh, so it's it's. Uh, I, I don't believe in, in 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 one person can do it all. Absolutely. Strategy. Now, now let's talk one more question about your career, and 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 the answer may be you survived the winters in Northern Canada, that may be a highlight, but if, it, <laughs> if there are other highlights, if you want to look back on things you've done that are pretty cool throughout your career, does anything stand out as a highlight you like to share? Uh, yeah, many highlights, uh, maybe, um, yeah, I, I enjoy working with people. Uh, my, I don't know if you can tell or not, uh, but I, I don't like to be stuck behind a computer for such a long time. You know, I did that for the first part of my career being a process control engineer where you, you know, sit and troubleshoot or sit and program certain code, sit and design. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed that the early part of my, uh, but you know, the moment that I broke away from it, I, I started finding uh, a different fulfill fulfillment and, uh, and that, that, that highlights a, 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 you know, a milestone. Uh, that was a chapter in my career where I'm, I'm, I'm glad I moved away from because I started learning, started experiencing different avenues. Right. Um, and I'm a very social person, uh, person, uh, you know, that's, that doesn't fit with your stereotypical, uh, engineers. Right. I somehow always find, find myself drawn to social events, participating and being in touch with in, in contact with people. Uh, and um, certainly that's not a typical engineer, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's probably one of, one of the main highlights uh, of my career. That's very cool, man. Now we, that thank you for sharing the information about your career. That's wonderful. I think you, you're you're making a big impact out there. Now let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk outside of work. And I'm excited because I've done some research on you. I know you got some pretty cool hobbies. So why don't you share with our listeners some hobbies you have, man? Yeah, I uh, have numerous hobbies, um, but uh, you know, with with a family, uh, young family, it's it's difficult to. To manage your time, work, and and what you want to do outside of work, and and basically just by yourself. So, I had to have to think of of ways of doing things with my son, give him engaged while you know I, I get to go for a run or or, or a bike ride or swim or whatever. So, um, 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 I, I I love running. Um, uh, I love cycling and and I love swimming. I used to race uh, for just a short period of time before I got injured. But luckily, I could I get to enjoy the 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 the, the running, uh, um, uh, so you know I, I try to find ways of doing that with my son. So I buy all this equipment to have him either sit with me, struggle through that with me, and 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 have sweat splash all over him. Uh, either take him on a bike ride with me, but uh, or, or and and try to at the same time trying to educate him, right? And have him have him pick up the the the, the sport that his dad his dad loves and enjoys. Uh, and another hobby, I like to coach and share my, and I like to coach uh, people and seeing people pursue their, their passions. Uh, I enjoy coaching and, and, and share my experiences uh, with, with uh, younger runners, uh, uh, seasoned runners, and, and people, even people that, that haven't, you know, uh, um, moved a couple of feet before uh, in, in, in a straight line direction to, to, to pursue running. Uh, primarily around, uh, you know, not only running, but I also coach, you know, uh, cycling and, and a little bit of swimming as well. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, talk to us. I, I haven't talked to a, a running coach before, <clears throat> to a running coach before. So maybe talk to us a little bit. What is a, you know, a typical session, a session with a running coach look like? What are you, what are you doing there? Well, coming from a, having a, an engineering background uh, uh, helps me look at uh, the, the uh, 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 symmetry points of each runner, right? Because, you know, we're pretty much symmetrical head to, to let's say belly button. After that, you know your legs are on their own. You know uh, uh, there's not much symmetry going down. So I look for opportunities to correct symmetry first before we can introduce, you know, any any hard workouts that would that would improve your your, your performance or your endurance. Uh, so I would I would look at getting 
a, 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 a symmetrical hip, symmetrical knees, symmetrical angles before we can attack different uh, 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 paradigms, if you will, uh, to improving your fitness and making you run faster and more efficiently. That's pretty cool, man. So how long have you been doing that? Uh, since, uh, you know, unofficially, not, not, not uh, as a business, I've been coaching uh, and mentoring runners since 2014, but I just launched my business uh, last year during the pandemic. Okay, man. Well, wish you much luck with that. And we can definitely link that into show notes so that our, our listeners can check it out and learn more that uh, if they want to run faster and get better, they, they know where to go, right? You got it. That's it. That's yeah. it. You, you mentioned that you, you, you rigged up your bike and your, uh, some equipment to take your son for a ride, uh, and, and run with you. So what can you, what, what else would you like to share with us about your family? Um, you know, I, I, from a loving and caring family, uh, was brought up in different parts, parts of the world, um, you know, Middle East, uh, Canada and the U S, um, you know, lived in five different countries, uh, by the age of 18, uh, I, I learned at, a, a, at an early age to appreciate the world and, 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 and believe that everyone has a lot to offer. Right. I'm fortunate to be married to a beautiful woman. We share a, a four and a half year old and a four month old uh, baby girl. Uh, and we're, we're, we're busy parents, uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that we have to uh, stop thinking about, about people around us people that support us, uh, uh, not necessarily people that we uh, uh, were ever going to ask a favor of, but, but uh, promote, promote a peaceful environment so yeah. everybody can, can be conducive to, to living life to the fullest. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you. Sounds like you have your hands full there with a the, uh, young baby and a, and a four and a half year old son. So that's uh, good times ahead for you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Luckily, she's been easy, not as the... Uh, you know, my son has been hit the hardest with him knowing that he's not going to, he's going to share his, his life with us now. Right. Uh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, it's, it's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Now, how about from a personal standpoint, are there any podcasts or videos, books, things like that, that you, that you find value in that you think you like to, uh, like to share with others? Yeah. I just recently started listening to you guys. You All know. right. There yeah. You yeah. It's, it's, you guys have, uh, and have been bringing great people, uh, interviewing great people, and been learning a lot from from from, from uh, the material you present. Uh, but uh, on the running front, uh, you know, like uh, I read I read a lot of books, primarily around running, marathon running, marathon training, and uh, um, just general form, general fitness books. And uh, I'd like to annotate maybe a couple of. The books that I've recently read is uh, uh, a book uh, called "Running Rewired." It's uh, it's it talks about how you can rewire your brain to run efficiently, and it gives you uh, presents uh, exercises that would rewire your brain to teach your body how to move in 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 in, in different planes, right? So I thought that was a really intriguing read. I learned a lot from it and that I use that as, as you know, let's say a, a Bible to educate runners and coach runners to adopt some of the, some of the exercises or fashions of, 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 of uh, 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 um, exercises that, 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 that book institutes. Right. And uh, another really good book. I don't know if you've heard of uh, David Goggins. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's uh uh, the book the book's name is is can't hurt me it's a great book to you know to help people move forward and achieve their goals uh he went from being uh, overweight and depressed uh, becoming a, a record-breaking uh, athlete he's an inspiring military leader uh and a world-class uh, personal trainer um you know when it comes to to getting fit uh, a lot of uh, you know basically what he talks about is is a lot of us find ex ex excuses to to not you know exercise Right. We're either too busy or we want to sleep in or we don't feel like it. Um, it's uh, it's a, a definitely a good read for your listeners to, to okay. uh, adopt. Yeah. And we'll, we'll make sure we link all that stuff in our show notes for our listeners. They can go straight to those resources, man. Yeah. So, uh, you know. and, go ahead. So, and a couple more books. Um, Awaken the Giant Within by Tony yeah. Robbins. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great book. I read it uh, twice now. 
And the first time I read the book was, you know, it made me feel really happy uh, for a few weeks, actually, just to, you know, try to remember the, 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 uh, 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 the things I read on a daily basis and try to implement them. Uh, and, and, uh, and the power of the techniques in this book, it, it definitely life changing for me. Uh, implementation of all, all of them can, can be difficult, of course. Um, many are not easy, but you have to force yourself to, to or be in that habit to make a change. Right. Uh, one of the most practical, practical books that I've ever read. Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, some of the takeaways that I've, I've, I've been utilizing till this day, I read the book, read the book about a year and a half ago. Uh, and some of the takeaways I can, I can uh, share with your listeners is, uh, you, you know, you can change your beliefs to, to, to ones that empower you and, and remove ones that disempower you. So always be positive, basically. Uh, focus only on things that can that you can control. Don't try changing things that you cannot. You don't have the power uh, uh, to 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 make a change or impact. And uh, follow your end values, uh, not your mean values. Right. That, 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 these are the three main takeaways. And another book uh, uh, is the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Oh yeah. I don't know if you've read that. Very well. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, it's a great book. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a definitely a good resource. Yeah. I have it uh, behind me on my bookshelf myself. So it's one that uh, has helped me in the past as well, man. So I'll tell you what, Hussein, we love to play a game mm -hmm. called the lightning round. We get to just ask a bunch of random questions, gives us a little more insight to who you are as a person, what makes you really tick. So if you're willing to play, we'll get started. Go ahead. I'm ready. All right, man. What's your, uh, I'm interested with you being the worldwide traveler that you've been. What's your favorite food? Uh, are you familiar with shawarma? No, sir. No, it's a Middle Eastern uh, steak. It basically rotates on, a, you know, put a bunch of, bunch of meat or chicken on a, on a, on a skewer and then rotate in front of uh, open flame. Okay. And they slice it, cut, put in a sandwich and uh, you devour it. That's awesome stuff, huh? Okay. Yeah. Our typical, you know, we don't have burger. We have burgers, but it's like a substitute to burger, but in the Middle okay. East. Yeah. Now, what's what type? What's your uh, adult beverage of choice when you're eating that? Um, I'm I'm a water believer. I believe in water. Another water. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. How about uh, let's go uh, all time favorite movie, man? Scarface. Scarface. All yeah. right. Yeah, I love what, that movie. What about music? Music, I like uh, dance music. Dance music, okay. <laughs> yeah, I like. Uh, uh, I don't know. I just listen on Spotify to dance music. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't have a particular. You know, I'm a very boring person, as my wife calls me. I, I listen to news uh, in the morning. I don't listen to music. Uh, you know, I try to find something, or I, I enjoy news channels. I, I don't know why okay. I enjoy the drama in the world. I like to listen to drama in the world. Yeah, you like listen to drama. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's definitely no lack of that right now, my friend. That's oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. How about sports teams, man? Do you have any favorite sports teams? Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge, huge soccer fan. Uh, I grew up in a household where my uncles watched soccer day in, day out. Or we call it football, you know. And in this world, you call it soccer. Uh, but I am a man united, Manchester United to the bone. Okay. Yeah. Or the soccer fanatics that listen to this podcast will understand. I, I don't like, I dislike Liverpool and I dislike Chelsea. So, okay. And, so, got yeah. It. You yeah. got that plug in. I hear you, man. Right. <laughs> now, now, you have been all over the world. So, I'm curious about this. Is there anywhere you haven't been yet that you love to go? Yeah. Uh, I'd love to visit uh, Turkey and I'd love to visit uh, the, uh, you know, Eastern Asia. Uh, I didn't have a chance to go to China, Taiwan, Thailand, uh, Vietnam. Uh, you know, I like, like I said, every country uh, offers something different, and there's good people everywhere you go. Sure. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to experience that East uh, uh, East Asian part now, of the world. Now, since you have been all over, how many languages do you speak? Uh, just two, just Arabic two. and English. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. How yeah. about vacation? Somewhere you've been? that you just highly recommend others to go to? Um, 
I can tell you a place that I haven't personally, but I, I, I my wife and I have been planning to go uh, uh, two places, uh, Greece and Turkey. Um, my parents uh, go to Turkey whenever they get a chance. Uh, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. It combines both both the, you know, the Middle East and Europe uh, in the same location. Uh, and Greece, it's known to be one of the most romantic, uh, uh, you know, Greece Greece island. Sorry, uh, you know, very romantic, very very uh, very beautiful. Okay, now sticking to that romantic theme. So if you got you're taking your wife out for a, a nice night, just just you and her. What are you guys doing? Where are you going? What, what's that night look like? Uh, we would probably end up in a restaurant and uh, be wanting to go back home <laughs> to look after the kids, you know, five minutes into it. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have any family around, so we don't have a lot of dates, if you will, uh, together. Uh, you know, parents are not close by. My parents right. live in, both our parents live in Canada. So, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, back to your question, if, if we do think of going out, we'll probably go spend an hour and then we'd be racing back to come home. I hear you. I hear you. And last one, man, dogs or cats? Uh, I don't have either, honestly. Okay. But if I would ever to, to, to get a pet, I would, I, would, uh, I would get a dog. There you go. There, there was only one right answer and you got it right. So ah, awesome. that's off to you. So man, that was a lot of fun, man. I got to know yeah. you more. Thank you for being such a good sport on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And this has been a, a, a fun conversation, Hussein, and, and we call it Eco Ask Why. We wrap up with the why. And this is all about your passion. You know, what drives you as an individual? So what would be your personal why? My personal why? Um, then I mentioned something about maybe retirement or it's your or, answer, buddy, for sure. Wherever you yeah, want. To go. You know, I, 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 I love bicycles. Uh, I don't know if you could tell, but I have a bicycle right behind me here. Okay. And, uh, you know, I love to ride. I love to race. Uh, you know, it just gives me, um, um, I don't know, it pumps that adrenaline in my, in, in my bloodstream. And, and, you know, I, I've always wanted to open my own bike shop where I'd leisurely bike to work every day. And it probably is a retirement dream. Uh, and then bike to work, back, back, bike back home when I'm done work, and then enjoy maybe two or three days, three rides a day with, with you know either the team or or whoever decides to pick up a ride with me during the day, um, you know, and then that that's on a personal level, and of course I, I, uh, something on on a, on a family level, you know, I, I uh, just watch my kids grow in front of my eyes and, 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 and God keeps me, I hope that God keeps me around so I can enjoy their successes. I hear you, buddy. Part of, part of that. I love it. I love it. And I hope that dream comes uh, to fruition one day for you. That sounds like a wonderful uh, goal that you're, that you're reaching for with that bike shop, man. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully I'll let you know when I'm 65. <laughs> now the people that want to learn about your, your coaching practice or just connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, my website probably has all the information, um, <clears throat> and I have an Instagram as well. The website is www.irun4number4.life. Uh, you can find a lot of the information there, contact information, and uh, plans that I offer. And we'll, and we'll make sure we link all that in our show notes for our listeners, too. They can go straight to Hussein's information for his uh, running practice and connect with him on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I know you drop a lot of really good quotes and things like that on LinkedIn. I'm really enjoying what you're putting out there. So um, man, this has been a fun hero conversation. You're definitely one of our heroes and I can't just thank you enough for taking the, the time you did with us today. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Well, you have a wonderful day, Hussein. You as well. You as well. Have a good weekend. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by an electrical equipment company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. 